Yo guys, Mystic here, and today I'm going to be teaching you all things electrical in 7 Days to Die. Now there is a lot to get through, so let's make our way into it, and I'll show you the basics and the advanced techniques of everything electrical. Okay, so to start off with, if you are making any electrical items, you will be needing a workbench because you cannot craft m this stuff in your inventory, so... The workbench is the most important thing that you can use, so you're going to have to have one of those if you are making all this stuff. So, for the perks that determine the electric tree is our intelligence. So, as you can see, I've maxed out our intellect to level 10. I've got our advanced engineering up to level 5. Now, I'm getting this to level 5. We are able to craft our SNG auto turrets, crucibles, and we get 50% more XP from electrical trap kills. Now, level 3 is where you actually learn to craft our generators, our electric fences and blade traps. So, that is where the main portion of all the electrics is. It is in level 3 advanced engineering. Now, again, our intellect to level 10, it doesn't really dictate the traps too much. It's just baton damage, robot turrets, and headshot damage. So the only reason to get your intellect up to max is to get advanced engineering up to level 5 and at least level 3 so you can craft our blade traps and our generators. Now first off, if you are building our electrics, we are going to be needing a wire tool. Now to craft a wire tool, you are going to have to go into your workbench that is nine forged steel and three mechanical parts so it is it's a little bit expensive to make but luckily for you you can actually buy these from the traders and get them quite early on in loot they're not an end game thing you can get these really early in the game probably is as, as soon as you spawn in the game you can find them or buy them from the traders so they're good and easy to make so first off in all the electrics let's get down to the basics so, first off, we are going to need a generator bank, so this is to power most and nearly all of your electrics, so to make it, it's really cheap, just 10 forged iron, 10 mechanical parts, and 14 electrical parts. And once you have crafted your generator bank, as you can see in the top left, it has the stats tab, so this has our gas, our max output in watts, and our power in watts. So the gas is easy enough, if you have it, you just refuel it, and this is to actually power the generator, because you have to power the generator somehow, this is the way to do it. So, the way to actually power the uh, stuff, except from the generator, so the outward, the output, you have to use engines. Now to find engines, you can buy them from the trader, or you can find them in loot, but you normally just use a wrench, and wrench them wrench down cars to find them they're not too hard to get but to get six of them it does take a while so one engine outputs 50 watts maximum so if you have all six as you can see we can output 300 watts from this one generator bank so if you're gonna have lots and lots of blade traps each blade trap is 20 watts so that will take 20 off your max output and put into power so you could only do a good few of them. You can only do 15 blade traps per generator bank. Now, if we turn the generator bank on, you can tell it's on because there is sparks flying from the relay and the smoke coming out of the exhaust here, and there is a sound that you can hear. So, good thing about the generator, it doesn't really run out of gas too quickly, so if you have it all the way full, you should be fine for a good while until it runs out now for the basics we're going to do our lighting here first so i have a basic light bulb here now these are also really cheap to make you have to have a workbench and it's just two forged iron and four electrical parts so the way to do this if you place this on your ceiling like this you get your wire tool you right click the generator bank and you can see this black wire here if it doesn't have anything on it, that means you're holding it and there's nothing powering it. But if you go too far, as you can see, it turns red. And this means that it's, you're too far away, so you can't power anything from this way. 
So if we go back here, if you if you actually look on your basic light bulb, you can see the 5 watt symbol, which is greyed out. So that means how much power that this light bulb needs from the generator. So now if we turn the generator on, the light bulb is on and it is taking 5 watts of power from the generator. So if we go inside, as you can see, power 5 watts, but it's not taking anything away from it. Now you can turn this on and off even when it is powered. So that is the good thing about these generators and lights that they don't take too much power from the generator. So you do see these wires which are a little bit ugly. Okay, we're now going to be moving on to these industrial lights. Now these industrial lights are a little bit different. So if we go on and place our industrial light, if we try and right click it and put it onto the generator bank, as you can see in the bottom screen, it says this power source cannot have a parent connection. So that means it can't be directly linked to the generator. So the way you fix this is we use these relays here. So if we put one of these down, we link the generator bank to the wire relay, which takes up one watt. So it's not too bad. It doesn't take up a lot of power. Then we right click the relay, put it over to our industrial light and now it turns on so it needs a relay to switch it on and off and you can as you say do this also if you wanted you don't actually have to use a wire relay so if we get rid of oh not the concrete block let's put that back in don't want to destroy my house if we put that back in you can actually if we do that light there and we can hook it up to that light now the problem with doing this is, yes it is hooked up, the current is you going through it, if we destroy this light, the power is no longer th flowing into this light. Next off we are going to do our spotlights. Now like I said before, if you wanted to power this, say your generator is in the main base, you wanted to power this spotlight all the way over here, we're going to have to move it a little bit further, we can't because the wire is red. Now the way to fix this like before is also with these relays now the basis for these relays are that it makes your wires longer so it does take up one watt but you can actually extend the wires another 14 meters to now power the spotlight and the good thing about these spotlights they are they do take up only five watts but you can actually point these spotlights where you want them to shine so they have a camera preview and they do sh and they do shine in a dome like feature so if we'll actually make this easier to see if we go to the night time here as you can see it powers it in a dome so like a nice cone shape okay so next up we are going to be talking about timer relays now these are th in the same premise as the electric wheel relays where you can extend the wires but these are a little different here so if you put a relay down here let's put our basic light bulb back up so if we right click our generator bank put it on the electric timer relay and then hook the electric timer relay up to the light bulb as you can see it still powers it but if we go e to interact and we start time at start time at eight o'clock or nine o'clock this powers off because it has not actually started this. So this can be useful for horde nights if you've got your blade traps on and you don't want to set them off all the time. You can start this at when the horde night starts at 10 o'clock and finish it at 4 o'clock in the morning. So your blade traps will be running all the way through horde night but when it's daytime and you're out of your base they're not going to be running but it will be still taking up power with the relays. Now another thing you can do which is mainly focused, you can do, this is just really useful overall, is as you can see you have these switches here. So if we place a switch down, you can see it's not powered right now so this light here should be turned red. So if we hook this up, it takes one watt just like the relays. But you see you can switch the light on and you can switch it off. So if we place another light bulb down if we hook our switch onto our light bulb this is powered off right now so 
this light is. And then if we power it back on, here we go, it turns on. So this is really good for your blade traps. Instead of using the timer relays, I prefer to use these because it's just much easier. You can hook this up at the top of your base when it's hard night, flick it on, and there we go, all your traps are powered. Now, an alternative to actually using the generator bank here is using a battery bank. Now, as the uh, name implies, this is this does use batteries instead of engines, but the problem is with these batteries, it does determine on the quality of the battery. So a level six lead car battery is the same as an engine. It does 50, but the lower tier you get, so the lower quality, the less power, at the less max output, the battery can use. Also, if you do turn this on, so this doesn't use gas, which is a good, good thing, but the batteries do decline over time and can get destroyed. So if we turn it on and leave it on for a while, this battery will get destroyed and then it'll move on to the next. So it goes to the top right. So the problem with this is that you do need level 6 batteries to make it the same as a generator and they do get destroyed. But to fix this problem, what you can do here is use one of these, which is a solar bank. So with the solar bank, you have to put these solar cells in, which do 30 watts a piece. You can make a max output of 180, and you can in fact wire the solar bank up to the battery bank. Then if you power anything with the battery bank, instead of the batteries getting degraded, they actually get recharged with this solar bank, which is the solar panels. I'm probably just going to call it that. So if you're going to use these early game just to make it a little bit easier for yourself, you're going to have to use solar bank, solar banks to recharge the batteries in the battery bank. I've been using bank a lot of the time here. <laughs> okay, now getting on to traps, which are the later game stuff. So I'm using our blade trap and SMG turret here. So if we put these down, we'll put one there, one here. So we'll put our blade trap down on this block. Like so, we'll put an SMG turret. We'll do the SMG turret after, sorry. So I do, as you can see, this takes up 20 watts, so it is a lot more, a lot more power intrusive. So it does need a lot more power than all the lights and stuff. And if we are going to do this, we do have to use a wire relay. So let's go hook this up, and then we can hook the wire relay up to the blade trap and then that starts easy as anything you don't need to interact with the blade trap you don't need to turn it on you don't need to turn it off it's just if it's hooked up to power it'll go and that's it you don't need anything to do with this now also if you are using different traps and you want to use the SMG turret here if we place this down there is motion sensors and alarms now you can do this if you have a say you have a huge mine that you want to protect whilst you're down there you can actually put all this stuff out so let's put the smg turret here now this is powered so you do have to actually have ammo into it and it does take up if you type in ammo here it does use our nine millimeter ammo and it is 300 each piece so if we put our three stacks in unlock ammo and it does have targeting so you can target yourself which i don't think you would target allies and target strangers and zombies so once you lock the ammo in it is all good it's all set if you click on the camera preview just like the spotlight you can actually see where this is going and in this mode you can actually fire with left click now one thing that helps with this smg turret if we put another block next to it and we put a uh, ooh, we'll have to get rid of this little tree here if we put a motion sensor on this block here and we interact with this motion sensor so we can do our camera preview ooh, we have to power it first i forgot about that so let's target zombies not self power delay instant so this is if it sees something it'll it'll spot it straight away and the power duration is just bad triggered, so this is easy enough. So we'll go power this up right now. So we can just go right click on the SMG turret and make the current flow through the motion sensor. 
So now, if we have a motion sensor, let's camera preview, let's put it here. If we go god mode here and we spot a zombie, so we'll spawn in a zombie here. Let's okay, where's zombie Bo? We'll spawn you in. So if we spawn him in, the SMG turret isn't actually facing him. So when it does, the SMG turret will go off. Now, I did a little bit of a failure. One thing I was meant to mention, the motion sensor doesn't interact with the turret. So the way I use motion sensors with this is, we spawn a bow here, like we did last time. Oh. Yeah, so let's, we'll spawn a bow in. So we go in F6 mode. We have a zombie bow. The SMG turret fires. It does do a lot of damage, as you can see. Now, the way I use motion sensors is I actually use a speaker next to it. So we do have to power up the speaker. So we use our 5 watt wire tool. We power it back up to there. Now, okay, so now we have wired up our motion sensor to our alarm. So what the alarm does is if a zombie gets spawned in here, it will create a massive noise so you can actually hear it. So if you're above, say you're mining down below here and you've got your defenses back up to the top and you want to know if any zombies are getting killed and you can't hear the SMG turrets, I would use these alarms here. They're really cheap to make. They're not too bad. So if we go alarm... Oh, if I can actually spell it right. Okay, so I do, you actually cannot build the alarm. You do just have to loot them or buy them from the trader. So they are kind of rare to get, but if you do have them, they are very good to use and very nice to do. So, yeah, like I said, the alarm will turn on when the zombie is in the range of the motion sensor. But you do have to have the motion sensor hooked up to the alarm. That is the only way they work in sync. Okay, guys, so if you did enjoy this tutorial and you do want to help the support of the channel and show some support and see if you like this series and you like the tutorials that I'm putting out, make sure you do smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you are new here and turn on post notifications so you get notified whenever I upload next. This has been Mystic and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Peace.